Hi everybody, I'm here with my friend Alonzo Giraldi, who is the author of a book you ought to have called Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas. Nice pun. Yeah, my uh, friend Dave Cobb came up with it. Okay, good. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Christmas movies because tis the season, right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, every December there seems to be a whole new crop of them, and the old ones are still jostling to get your attention. Well, they don't have to jostle to get my attention. <laughs> I mean, I prefer the familiar. Oh, in yeah. fact, I think, I think that's the, part of the appeal of uh, Christmas movies to me is their familiarity. Oh, no question. This is the one time of year that you hear Andy Williams on FM radio. And or, it's, or, or Gene Autry at the mall. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it's the one time of year that, that a, a 1946 black and white movie for, with Jimmy Stewart gets three hours of NBC primetime. Exactly so. So, yeah. No, we're, we're all about the tried and true at this time of year. But oddly, uh, and it is kind of odd to look back now and think about this, some of those vintage Christmas movies weren't really targeted at a Christmas audience. No, no, no. I, I was kind of surprised to discover that in, in researching the book. Uh, for example, uh, Christmas in Connecticut with, with Barbara Stanwyck, mm -hmm. that's a, a, a popular favorite, uh, was released in uh, like March or April. It came out of the, in the early part mm -hmm. of the year. Uh, and then Daryl Zanuck, when he was running Fox, uh, purposely released Miracle on 34th Street in August. <laughs> with an advertising campaign that didn't mention Santa Claus at all. Uh, if you see the trailer, I think it's on the DVD, you can probably even find it on YouTube. It's a great trailer. Yeah, where it's like, oh, it's a comedy, it's a romance, it's a drama, and no no mention of Christmas or Santa <laughs> Claus at all. Uh, apparently, Zanuck thought that people didn't go to the movies at Christmas time. And so I don't think really it was until the 70s when It's a Wonderful Life went to the public domain and was wallpapering television mm -hmm. that it ever dawned on anybody that the Christmas movie was a phenomenon that people wanted to return to over and over again, you know, during the holiday season. And uh, and so they do. Oh, and absolutely. So now we have these <laughs> Hallmark and Lifetime well, movies yeah. galore. <laughs> By the wheelbarrow full. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a curious genre because it, it is now so specific, mm -hmm. so targeted to this one time of year, that if if your movie is called Jingle All the Way <laughs> or Four Christmases right and you don't get a good turnout the week of Christmas mm -hmm. you're dead in the water we're well, deader than dead. I think, though, in the same way that It's a Wonderful Life wasn't a hit and then you know sort of became mm -hmm. beloved, I think a lot of these movies find an afterlife on don't, television. Don't tell me that's going to happen to Jingle All the Way. Uh, you know, Please. you'd be surprised. There are kids who, hold, <laughs> if you saw it when you were eight and thought it was hilarious, you're going to carry it with you for the rest of your well, life, unfortunately. Yes, yes, I, I know uh, that's true. I think there, there, the, a lot of the reason that these contemporary ones exist, I mean, not just the, the Hallmark Lifetime ones, but, you know, new movies you look at like Best Man Holiday or Medea Christmas even, it's because the afterlife is sort of guaranteed you know, come December, yeah. cable channels are going to run those, DVDs are going to come whether out they're, again. Whether they're good or not. Whether they're good or not. Yeah. And, and, it's, and obviously it's not a guaranteed moneymaker, but if you make one, even if it's not a great movie, if it hits that sort of sentimental sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the movies that we think of today now as the, the Christmas classics, White Christmas, Christmas in Connecticut, you go back and read the reviews from when they came out and people said, oh, this is moth-eaten, this is sentimental hogwash, you know, and, and all the more reason that that's why we want to watch it every year. Some of us do. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of White Christmas, and, uh, and uh, I prefer Holiday Inn, uh, but that just makes me a contrarian. That's all. Well, you know, it's because you like the blackface number, Leonard. That's fine. <laughs> well, you know, we understand. <laughs> I, I love the the Philip Roth line about uh, about the genius of Irving Berlin was that he took the two main Christian holidays and made them about hats and snow. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and 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 uh, uh, a a Lower East Side Jew, right? Uh, Wrote the Christmas the, song of all time, right? <laughs> the, the anthem for Christmas, the American anthem for Christmas. Uh, what what do you think has stood out in recent years? Say the past decade or so. Well, you know, it's funny. This year actually turns out to be a big anniversary year for, for Christmas movies. It's the 30th anniversary of A Christmas Story, which yeah. has sort of become... One of the greats. America's holiday movie, you know. Well, it, it's a perfect movie. No, absolutely. It, 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 it is a, not it a is wrong a, step it in it. It is a perfect movie. Yeah. And and by being a period piece, it is ageless. Yeah. You know, it was made in 1983, but it's not like... Everybody's got 1983 haircuts or anything, you know. So it, it, it it's an eternal one. Uh, it's the 25th anniversary of Die Hard, which people love. <laughs> and it's a Christmas movie, you know. I, I always tell people, the husband and wife reconcile the holidays and there's gift wrap in the finale. Um, you know, and so that that's a popular one. It's the 20th anniversary of The Nightmare Before Christmas, mm -hmm. which, you know, shockingly enough, Disney at first was 
kind of put off by. They released it under the Touchstone banner. They didn't, you know, they didn't put out a lot of merch for it. And of course now it's, it comes out back every year under the Disney banner and, you know, you go to Disneyland and it's nothing but nightmare. Um, and then it's the 10th anniversary of Love Actually and Elf, which people uh, have, have turned into uh -huh. go-to. So uh, every, you know, every year we get new pretenders to the throne and some make it and some don't, but, uh, you know, we've not seen the last of the Christmas movie wave. So will we be here in 10 or 20 years talking about the anniversary of Medea's Christmas? Uh, you know, I've learned never to rule out anything. <laughs> That's a very smart policy. <laughs> I don't know if it's effective in this case, but it's a smart overall Well, policy. Medea Christmas works when Medea's on screen. Mm -hmm. Boy, when she isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think people are more forgiving of Christmas movies because there's a built-in... Uh, sentiment about the holiday. Oh, absolutely. I think in the same way that we kind of, we want to hear all the different renditions of, you know, the Christmas waltz or, or Jingle Bells or, or mm -hmm. Rudolph, uh, Christmas movies tend to hew to certain themes of, of, of redemption and forgiveness and, and peace and families coming together. Mm -hmm. And we are comforted by that. And I think that we're willing to give slack to Christmas movies in a way that we might not to films that, that aren't hitting us in that, you know, sort of warm and cozy holiday holiday time of year. Yeah, well, that's a big advantage for uh, filmmakers who are not totally inspired. It uh, <laughs> could be. It, it gives it gives them a leg up. I think I think certain things go with the season. I will not be wearing this in January. So, you know, it's it's just you have <laughs> to know not? what works. You have to know what works for it's December. It's about snow and reindeer. <laughs> There's nothing specifically oriented. Um, I wore it at Sundance once and I immediately thought, "Oh, no, no, this was a mistake." <laughs> <laughs> but in December it's great. Okay. Well, <laughs> Sundance is not noted for its fashion either. That's right? true. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm so glad that you're here today and giving us uh, the benefit of your wisdom and your research. Do you have, if I asked you for one unsung or underappreciated hmm. Christmas movie to wrap this up? Wow, okay. I, you know, I, this one I think, uh, there are so many A Christmas Carol adaptations. I did an entire chapter of the book of them. There's just dozens and dozens of them. But the one that I really love is the 1970s Scrooge with Albert Finney. Mm -hmm. It's a musical. Leslie Bricus did the songs. Uh, Finney's one of the few actors that plays young Scrooge and old Scrooge, mm -hmm. which I think really helps in terms of sort of seeing the character transform and from kind of, you know, young and promising and romantic to horrible and curmudgeonly. Uh, you know, you've got Alec Guinness as Jacob Marley and Dame Edith Evans as the Ghost of Christmas Past. And uh, it's very post Oliver, so the streets of London are filled with dancing people, and there's a 20 minute reprise of all the songs at the end where Scrooge has a Santa costume on and he's buying presents for everybody, and it's just so joyful your head will explode. <laughs> there's a money quote. <laughs> all right, so joyful your head will, will explode. explode. And, I, and, who does, and who doesn't want that at Christmas? At Christmas, time? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Alonzo, thanks for being here. Again, Thank the name of the letter. book is Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas. And, uh, and I recommend it very highly. And you can always uh, catch up with you where? Uh, I am the uh, film critic for TheRap.com. That's T-H-E-W-R-A-P. Mm -hmm. And I'm the host of a weekly podcast called Linoleum Knife. And you can find more about that at linoleum-knife.com. All right. That's the relevant info. And uh, we'll be more relevant on our next YouTube video. Thanks for tuning in. Happy holidays. <laughs>